In this episode of the podcast, we're talking to my friends, Karin and Regis of Creative Soul Photography. Now, if you haven't heard of Creative Soul or Karin and Regis, you soon will in many places because in 2020, they released a book called Glory. Now, they are not only photographers, but also best-selling authors. Glory is an incredible book. I own a copy. You guys need to get this thing. It is not only inspiring, the book is filled with children that have been dressed up and turned into incredible symbols of creativity, of power, and of culture. This book has been featured all over the place by a number of celebrities as well as platforms. They have been on and will be on every single show that exists. And they're two incredible people and artists. We're going to dive into this episode, into this entire journey of creating glory, of creating all of the images behind their work, and how they almost walked away from it right before it became successful. Let's jump in. This is the TSS Podcast. It's a place for authentic conversations to uncover the stupid simple truths that help us succeed in business, create better relationships, and lead more fulfilling lives. Welcome to Think Stupid Simple. I'm going to, I'm going to relight. I'm going to relight. Yes. Hold on. (laughs) Is that a scent? Does it have a certain scent? It is. I have, I have certain scents that are my happy place. Okay. Okay. I like to smell them throughout our entire, (laughs) you know, conversation. Yes. I love it. I love it. I feel like we need to step our game up, Reg. (laughs) So first thing for our audience is your names are not Karen and Regis, but Karen (laughs) and Regis or Reg for short. We were just chatting a second ago and I was like, okay, so I've been pronouncing your names wrong (laughs) ever since I've known you. (laughs) (laughs) We get it all the time. We probably don't even correct people anymore just because I know I have a, we have a difficult name. So (laughs) yes. It's, it's not that difficult. I, I shortened my name specifically for the same re- reason as probably Reg's name, um, yes. everyone would would get mine. My my full name is Payam, but people would always uh, say Payam. So I'm like, well, why not just shorten it to Pai? See, so, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, you're used to it. You know the deal. <laughs> I yeah. I went with the crowd. You guys are properly resisting. Pronounce oh. <laughs> our names correctly. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Well, that's so cool. It's so great having you guys on to the podcast. I mean, yeah, we met. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. We met back in Alaska. Um, oddly enough, I actually recorded Sarah's episode today as well. We were just talking about Alaska. Yep. And since then, it's been a, a whirlwind for you guys. It has. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I think <laughs> at that time, the book, you know, definitely the book had not come out yet. Um, we were still, you know, trying to get things going, figure it out. I believe at the time we thought it was going to come out that year. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, so actually the book was supposed to come out a year earlier. Um, and oh, wow. the, okay. uh, the publisher, so we had actually shot for the book uh, mostly like 2018. Mm-hmm. And um, the publisher thought that they didn't have enough time to adequately promote it and market it. And we were crushed. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> but I feel like, not like you yeah. had, you know, uh, shot all this content amazing content share. and we had been all over the world and we had been shooting for it. We've been yeah. waiting, like we'd already waited, you know, for some months at that point. Mm-hmm. And they were like, Oh, we just don't think we have, you know, the time that we need to really promote it. Like we want to. And at the time we were just crushed. We were like, Oh my gosh. But we were like, we'll listen to them. We trust them. You know, we'll go with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we had to literally wait an entire, a whole nother year. Um, and, but I will tell you yeah, that in terrible. hindsight, that ended up being the best decision. Um, I think that, you know, not only with everything that went on, um, in 2020, um, but, you know, just the timing of everything, I think people were so receptive of the book and, um, received it a little bit more, more than I think if it had been released in 2019. Um, and it, you know, I, I just think that it ended up being perfect timing. So, yeah, we. I'm glad that we uh, roll with the punches on that yeah. one. <laughs> it almost. Uh, I mean, yeah. let me let me say it like it is. It's it's almost serendipitous yes. that it was released when it was because yes, <laughs> we uh, in 2020 you had all of the different social issues on top of COVID. Yes. Um, every, yes. uh, first, everybody's already 
at home. We have time and it's not like, you know, right. I'm not <laughs> there. There's the whole tragedy of COVID. And then there's the reality of just everyone being home. Yes. Not knowing what exactly. to do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then not knowing what to do. I also felt like that played so much into the social issues because, yes. well, now that the social issues are happening, nobody has anything and it, to it do. And center, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like you, you, that's the only thing there is to kind of focus yes. on. And yes. then all of a sudden, glory comes out, and yes. that's when I, I remember it being released was twenty twenty, right? Was it in twenty twenty? Yes, twenty twenty. It? it was um, October twenty twenty. Um, and you know, now all of a sudden, here comes a book about black joy, right? Yes. <laughs> and something that everyone is just like, wow, like this is something that we could use right now. <laughs> just a book that showing, you know, kids that are doing these amazing things, um, talking about a, a range of, of um, issues from, um, you know, we'll, we'll get into that, but just talking about a range of issues and, you know, just seeing joy <laughs> yeah. for a change. I think that people were just ready for it, right? Like just, just ready for it um, and ready to, to receive it. So yeah, it's, it's amazing that it ended up coming out when it did. Hundred <laughs> percent. Because it certainly was not planned that way. Anthony, you got to show like, like, while I'm talking about this, you need to, you need to showcase those images. I mean, the images oh. <laughs> are incredible. Like, we're, we're not only, you know, we're in 2020 and everybody's dealing with just the, the results of 2020, but then the images of glory come out and they're powerful. Um, is there a place where he can cycle through those images? Um, if he clicks right there on the, um, yep. There we go. And Afro art series. Yep. And then he can scroll down Mm -hmm. and then scroll down there. There. I mean, I have a bajillion questions in terms of like the oh. <laughs> creation process and everything, but I, I couldn't have, you couldn't have come up with a, a better timing of the release and the positive message that was included within the book, which is something that I kind of feel like everybody was so hungry for, like something yes. good, something <laughs> positive. Yes. And, you know, for us, you know, one of the reasons, and I, I'm pretty sure we'll talk about this, but one of the reasons that, you know, we started doing what we do is because of, you know, we feel like there's often this one-sided view of Black culture in the media. Um, and we knew what we were seeing every day, right? <laughs> we were seeing these yes. kids who were amazing, who were doing amazing things, who had amazing stories um, and just didn't have that platform. And so, um, you know, it was something that we wanted to do to just kind of give them that platform and show them in a different light. Um, and so again, like I said, I think people were just so ready to receive that and and to be able to see that. <laughs> I, I um, have been seeing these, um, these messages um, from some of our uh, people that we follow on social media. And a lot of people are now just talking about um, how African-Americans are just ready to see, um, I guess, movies and things, you know, shows that just don't show black trauma, right? <laughs> like, I feel like for so long, it was about, you know, black trauma, right? Um, and we are ready to see a different side, you know, we're ready to see um, excellence, we're ready to see, you know, sci fi movies, and you know, <laughs> just yeah. something different. Uh, right? like for me, growing up, it was kind of like, you kind of feel like you could only be what you see. So yeah, like, if <laughs> for that's, sure. If that's what you see, it's kind of like what you yes, just this is what you perceive and it's just what you uh, what you become project. right yeah. <laughs> um and it's not to gloss over the issues because we do mm-hmm. touch on some serious topics as well um but it's just really you know kind of balancing that out and showcasing a different side yeah i i feel like from the standpoint of media and film they generally go to the lowest hanging fruit yes and- <laughs> The lowest hanging fruit is showing, I mean, it's easier to write a script about, uh, you you could almost say it's a trope, you know, what's happening in any, any poverty like area, what's happening with it. it, It's happening so frequently. It's it's easy to come up with those stories because they're all around us. (laughs) Yes. And it's almost like they're also easily received. Everybody's used to listening to those and watching those. And so, yeah. it's unusual to see a movie like Black Panther that is right, right, yes. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a risk like they're creating right. something wondering like is this going to be accepted is this going to be you know 
they're putting it out there and it's so unique and so different and it's exactly what everybody wants. And when glory was released, I was like, this is just beginning. Like we're balancing the, this storyline, you know, like every, everybody's story needs to be told, but you can't just tell one side of the disenfranchised because like you said, it, you begin to think that's all there is for you to it right Mm -hmm. (laughs) it would be like trying to tell this you know show california and only showing skid row right for sure (laughs) like there's so much more right Mm -hmm. to it um and so it's you know for us it's so um, funny that you mentioned the whole black panther thing um but for us you know just entering the market and entering uh the photography industry in the space that was kind of what we felt when we kind of switched over to doing what we do right Mm -hmm. like it was like I don't see anyone else that's doing this. Oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> we're going to yeah. be, uh, you know, you know, people are not going to book us, you know, are we going to, you know, just kind of pigeonhole ourselves into this one block box and then, you know, we're not going to be well received. It was, there were a lot of risks to it. Um, but at the time we, you know, honestly, we were kind of at a place where we were just like, forget it. <laughs> Like it is what it is, and this is what we want to do. And either there are going to be people that like it, there are going to be people that hate it. Um, but at the end of the day, we're just going to have to do what we do. <laughs> um, and we had to be okay with that. And so that was, I think, honestly, that point in our career, that was kind of like the, I guess, one of the light bulb moments for us. Um, and it was a freeing moment for us because we felt like we were no longer kind of chained by this box that we had to fit in. Uh, and so that was, I think that was probably around trying like, trying to fit in. Yeah. yeah that was yeah. like around 2013, 2014. Um, and it was definitely, it was a freeing feeling for us because mm-hmm. now it was kind of like, you know, we have this one path and this is what we're trying to do. And, you know, hopefully folks will join us on this train, <laughs> but if well, not, describe we're just- that. Yeah, yeah. Des- <laughs> describe that box. What, what it, was it that you yeah. felt was limiting? So, so when we first started out, um, so around 2013, so we started in 2009. Um, and at the time we were doing, we were photographing everything. So anything that people would pay us for families and babies and yeah. weddings, <laughs> right. I was still working, um, in corporate America full time and Reg was doing this full time. Um, and so we kind of came to a point where we were like, wait a minute, why are we going to build a business that we hate? Right. <laughs> Yes. Like we would go to a wedding uh, and photograph a wedding and we, and uh, li- listen, yeah, I look yeah. at what you guys do <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, there, yeah. there's certain ways for certain people. Yes. It is I not our lane, right? lane <laughs> And it was not our lane, right? I like, fully right? understand. You would get so nervous, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so then we started, um, we decided that we loved uh, photographing kids. And so at the time, I didn't even know any children's photographers. We were just like, I don't even know if we can make a living for this. Um, and we decided, um, we knew that we wanted to photograph kids, but we knew our definition of photographing kids wasn't really like taking them out into a field, let them run and play, that kind of thing. You know, yeah, I knew that was yeah. a, a thing, but that wasn't really what we were trying to do. And so decided to get into the kids fashion industry um, because we thought that we could be a little bit more creative there. You know, we could um, do some themed and editorial type shoots, that kind of thing. So we started getting sucked into the box. I guess this, to me, there's this like um, um, kids fashion industry box where everyone's trying to get into the different magazines and, you know, get editorials and, you know, do all this. And you have to use certain designers and you have to have them in certain clothes and they have to look this way. And, you know, (laughs) yes, it was just so much. Right. (laughs) Um, And this is what works on Instagram. You don't want to deviate from this. Yes, Yes, exactly. And it was, and we kept hitting this box because we wanted to obviously showcase our stories and our way. And we wanted to use certain designers that were not mainstream, right? <laughs> um, and the the magazines, they would say, oh, well, you know, it's so nice, but just doesn't really fit into what we're trying to do, you know? <laughs> um, and so it was a little bit discouraging at the time. Um, and finally, you know, we just hit this point where we were just like, because we were doing that for a while. And what we did was, we were working with, um, you know, certain stylists to try to fit into that box. Um, yeah. And, you know, we were kind of just going along with it, just doing what what we thought we needed to do. And again, you know, that's when, at, you know, some point we were just like, listen, we want to do things our way. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we both made a we really made a conscious decision to say, hey, this is the direction we're going to go. Um, what was happening is what we were we were getting um, kids that would come in for their headshots um, and they would um, have natural Afro hair. And when they would come in for the headshot, the parents would have their hair straightened. 
because they thought that that's what they needed to do to get their kid into the industry. And we were like, wow, that's oh really sad. Gosh. And like, when you think about it, like we're teaching these kids at, you know, a really early age that their hair that grows out of their head is not acceptable or that their looks yeah, are not they acceptable. need to conform. Right? They, have to need, they need to conform in order to fit into this industry standard. And so yep. we decided to um, just do a couple of personal projects for ourselves. And so um, I don't know why we chose New York. We had actually, at the time, <laughs> this is like 2030, we had actually never even been to New York before, but <laughs> we chose New York and we went to Times Square. I don't even know why Times Square. I guess we just, you New know, York if you know New York, issue, yeah. <laughs> Times Square, Time Square like, right? I don't know why we just and we there. had three little five year old girls in these big, fashionable, you know, poofy dresses, big natural hair. And obviously, like everyone was looking and they're trying to figure out what is going on. And like we're doing we're trying to do this whole fashion shoot in the middle of Times Square with three five year olds. Right. Um, and we um, you know, that was kind of our first time doing like, a, you know, a shoot in our style. And um, we were still new to social media, you know, Instagram. We I think we posted a picture and we came back and some bloggers and other folks started sharing it. And I was like, oh, wow, this is interesting. Like we never got anybody to share before. <laughs> and That's so um, we did that. And um, a few months later, we started doing a couple of other shoots. We went to Texas, Austin, I believe, um, and did a what we call a roller skate girl shoot. Um, you know, just kind of taking it back to our childhood and thinking about. Well, wait, ho you know, hold on one second, because <laughs> you, you mentioned that wedding stress you out you're describing yes. photographing children in yes. times square <laughs> and my head is like going wild like that sounds like the most stressful <laughs> yes, yes that is uh, looking back at it now is like what in the world are we doing and and at the time like we were still so new that we didn't even go in like location scout or anything we just showed up in the middle of times square <laughs> so we showed up in the middle of times square and like we just looking at all of these people and <laughs> Oh I'm my gosh. You know? <laughs> Y'all are crazy and I freaking yes, love it. Yes. Like this is, oh my goodness. Okay. So yes, keep going. You're, you were in right. Dallas so, next. Yes. So, um, so now we went to Austin, Texas and, and okay, wait, Austin. let me tell you what us there. Um, we had, I don't know if you photograph in the uh, neon museum in Vegas. Um, yes, I've the, been there. Okay. So that was like one of our bucket list places, right? Yeah. We had found it on Pinterest and was like, oh my gosh, I love this place. And then I called them and I was like, okay, we can't afford that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's going to stay on the bucket list for now. <laughs> and so, um, what I wanted, I love, I just love that, you know, the old neon sign yeah. and everything. I the wanted neon that graveyard. Kind of we were basically doing a shoot that was um, inspired by, you know, when I grew up, we used to skate in the streets and, you know, just be like these, you know, roller skating with your friends, you know, just kind of um, carefree childhood type of shoot. Yeah. And so, um, uh, we found this guy who actually he makes neon signs <laughs> in Austin, Texas. He has this little trailer, right? So he lives oh, in a trailer. Man. He has all the neon signs. They're all outside of his trailer. And it looks amazing. Like you can make it work, you know, <laughs> with the power of photography, you can make like it work. Like miniature and, neon like, museum graveyard. Yes, it is. Yes. And I think he charges like 75 bucks or something, right? Let oh, us get heck dressed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let 75 bucks. Dressed. Let's do it. <laughs> Right. Yes, we were like getting dressed in one of his rooms, right? Like, <laughs> and it worked. But, you know, we had no team at the time. It was just us. You know, I think we had uh, the models were like our photographer friends, uh, kids, you know, and um, went there and did the shoot, came back and um, shared it. And that was the turning point, basically. Uh, so we went from about 2,000 followers to about 20,000 in about a month, right? Wow. <laughs> just from that shoot alone. Um, people were just, I think they were just so um, connected to not only the material, you know, just, I think it resonated with so many of us, our child, you know, our childhood experiences mm -hmm. and carefree black childhood <laughs> um, yeah. and also seeing something different, you know, not seeing kids photograph or, you know, and especially black kids photographed in this light before um, at the time. And so it just resonated with a lot of people. And that was kind of the starting point where we were like, wow, maybe we can, maybe we do have a lane here. Maybe we can do this. Um, and we continue doing it from there. So it definitely wasn't smooth sailing from there, but that was kind of the start of, you know, <laughs> of us finding our, our lane, I guess. Well, how did you feel when you weren't in your lane? Like what was, when you did have to go out and shoot a wedding or were, mm -hmm. when you were conforming <laughs> or trying to shoot what other yeah. people wanted, what was the feeling that yeah. you had? Oh my goodness. Like yeah. Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> <dealing with> <laughs> 
in between dealing with turning into Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah, and especially with friends, like um, I'm pretty much at at times I can kind of go with the flow and just you know make it happen and not really think too much of it. Reg is much more of the feeling one, you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> He would get Reg, so I'm with you, brother. <laughs> he would get so stressed, especially like with a wedding. Like he would get so stressed out. It could be like a wedding book the year in advance, and he would be stressed out. Yeah, every day I yeah. wake up like a wedding is like tomorrow. Right, right. You're, you're sweating 12 months in <laughs> yeah, advance. Listen, man, like this is before I knew about second shooters and you, you everything. Yeah. And, you know, he was just stressed yes. out, you know. And so it was just, it really just felt like we were just collecting checks right like we were just collecting yeah. money um it, we didn't really have a lane we were just doing it because we knew we liked photography mm -hmm. but you know we just figured this is what you do right like yeah. you go and you know you try to make money from wherever you can <laughs> um yeah. but you know i think what helped was the fact that i was still working in corporate america and so i'm like wait a minute if we're gonna do this and we're gonna do it ourselves and do it on our own it better be something that we like, you know, for sure. <laughs> like for I could sure. be sitting at my desk, you know, getting these nice bonuses. Right. <laughs> and, you know, not having to worry about all, all the overhead of being a business owner. So, you know, that was kind of like, OK, if we're going to do this, it needs to be something that we both like. And especially also, I think because we are a husband and wife team, um, that also plays a factor in that. Like, you know, I always tell people there's no easy turn off button when you're a husband and wife team. Right. Like, yeah. You know, it's, it can be, it's easier said than done. Um, but, you know, your work life, you know, spills into home life. So if we're not happy with what we're doing, you know, work-wise, then it's going to spill over into our relationship as well. So it's like impossible to kind of split the two. And turn it off. Yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> so that's, well, you know, I always say we're working for our happiness, right? <laughs> like no, it for needs sure. to be happy at all times because otherwise it's going to spill into our relationship as well. Well, okay. I'm going to ask a, a story on that side, but I can, I can yeah. relate when, you know, when Reg is describing like the stuck in between two worlds, Anakin Skywalker thing, there, yeah. there's a very real grind. And I don't, I don't know that people understand when, when mm -hmm. you're doing something that doesn't quite align with who you are and what you value, there's this yes. very real two gears grinding kind of feeling that just is, drains you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. You nailed it right. It drains yeah. you. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel that way. Um, you know, a lot of people are stuck in jobs right now that they feel like, gosh, this is just not, you know, there's something else inside of me, something else that I know that I was meant to do. Um, I just need to figure it out. Right? Okay. So um, tell me this. Yeah. Wait, I, w w with the, you, before yeah. you go on to no, another thing, there yes. was the relationship. Tell yes. me, is there off the top of your head, one uh -huh. of those shoots in glory that uh -huh. happened during a fight. <laughs> oh gosh, let's say during man, a fight. It's hard to remember, man. I don't know about <laughs> during a fight. You want to say a fight? But let's just talk about the London shoot, right? <laughs> the London shoot. You have one on the top of your head. <laughs> yes, and yeah, I don't know. We'll have to try to. I'll, I'll have to try to send you those pictures so you can put that up uh, if you can. <laughs> um, but oh my gosh, like that was such a difficult shoot. Uh, we it seemed like everything that could go wrong went wrong, right? <laughs> um, yes. We so we um, you know we had we were lucky. So when we I finally left my full time job in 2016, and okay. we had the right idea to. Um, do what we call a world tour, right? So we went to like eight countries in about 35 days. Um, and we Holy shot crap. in all those different countries. Um, and we, yeah, we self-funded it. We did everything ourselves, right? <laughs> but we were just, I just wanted to like experience us traveling to other places and shooting. And I didn't want to have to answer to anybody. You know, I just wanted us to be like something that we just do for ourselves. So we had that in the background. Thank God that <laughs> that we had, you know, done that before. So we had some connections and we had, you know, some experience before we actually did Glory. Um, but when we did Glory, um, we knew that we wanted to shoot in London um, and we had chosen uh, we wanted to do this like Afro Victorian theme, like really regal. Um, I actually, it was at the B&H uh, speaking event that we did. Uh, there was a woman that came up to us and asked if we knew this um, dress designer um, who does these beautiful Afro-Victorian pieces. And I was like, mm -hmm. no, but I need her, right? Mm -hmm. So she connected us to her. Um, she was in Brooklyn um, and she actually did um, 
agreed to do the the dresses for us so they were just big beautiful gowns afro victorian oh, gowns that she created. um and Anthony, she had you find that shoot yeah right <laughs> i want to yeah. see the images yeah and um she actually um she actually sh um shipped them to, to london for us because we knew we were gonna not gonna be able to ship them to atlanta and then get them there so she shipped it to a friend of ours in london um but she put the actual value on there <laughs> oh, and no. it was like fifteen thousand dollars right no. <laughs> and so when my client received the the <laughs> the um the invoice it was like a thousand bucks or something crazy to just pick up the just package, the taxes right, so right? Like, yeah yeah just the, the taxes so that was like the first hurdle so we finally got the dresses um we were staying in an airbnb with these little stairways <laughs> this little stairway we had to drag this huge box like up and down right up and down the stairs we tried to drag get... <laughs> the box we had to disassemble the box yeah it was like it was like a so giant dress much. Like, it was so much them were they were they came in layers so I had to walk the, up and down, I think four flights of yeah, stairs. Yeah, <laughs> trying to get these Bring things. each layer up. <laughs> and then um, if you've uh, done, if you've uh, ridden a, an Uber in uh, London, you know all the cars are like super tiny, right? <laughs> so yes. trying to get the box into the Uber car. So we finally get there, get everything going. Everyone's beautiful. The, you know, we, we were working with a hairstylist that we'd always want to work with. She was like one of our bucket list stylists. Um, we get there, girls are looking great. We're in this like fancy hotel um, and we were shooting in like the library in their in their room and at the time this was before our alaska trip <laughs> so we were still using some big bulky lights that uh this is actually our first so time just traveling imagine, with lights. like the stress of like just getting all this stuff together yeah. you know, i am imagining this reg this, this yeah, is like, stressing me out so, like, you can imagine that she was probably like just bickering at me in the yeah, morning. Right. so we go to the shoot and um I got one job to do. Right, he's the like, he's the lighting guy, right? Sure the lights are, are, are just fine and working. <laughs> and we plug the light. So we had a converter for the light for the no, lights. For the, um, we had a converter for the plug. But right. I never knew about the converter that converts the um the power. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we had, plug it in. We yeah. had alien bees at the time. <laughs> yeah. So we plug it in and the lights go poof like the the. No. the... <laughs> and, and you know. No. I'm, 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 before. And um, I thought it was just something, you know, just something that randomly happened. So right. I, oh I my God. Up. Yeah. So we we had two lights, so we plugged the next one up. And then uh, <laughs> I don't know how like the fan is in the back of the alien be light. So uh, it was like a spiraling fire that, that was that came no. from the both sides. It was like a spiraling fire. Yes. And it just blew up, man. Oh like, so, like, the guy comes in, like, power to the power, whole bottom of the uh, hotel, hotel is out, out, right? <laughs> and, oh, um, my gosh. The guy comes in, and he says, um, oh, is everything okay? And I'm like, um, yeah, we're cool. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but inside, like, so I'm like, you know, we're there with all of our clients, the hairstylist, the makeup artist. I'm trying to like, not, you know, how you do that thing where you're not trying to freak out in person, but inside you're really like freaking <laughs> out, right? Wanted, she really wanted to kill me. Now. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I'm like, you know, gosh, okay, there are these big windows. Maybe we could just do natural light, but I knew that wasn't the look I was going for. And so thank God our makeup artist had a continuous ring light. And oh, we wow. used that ring light. And I, you just have to see the photos because it is amazing <laughs> that we were able to get these shots with <laughs> with that ring light, but we made it work. And I, oh my gosh, just that was that was the most stressful shoot that I I would say. <laughs> now, if you're looking for a story where she was probably mad at me, <laughs> it was that shoot that we did in London, and I think I forgot a modifier at where we were staying at Airbnb during yeah. the same trip. Yeah, no, I think this was was that. I think it was, I'm trying to remember. No, I that think one. that was during that trip. We had to do the set. <laughs> so I left a modifier there. She was upset at yeah. me because she was already upset at me for something that morning. So I had all these layers of her just being mad and built up on me. So I I had to be a husband, man. I, I ran back three miles. Yes, I remember. I do Airbnb remember that now. I do remember on that. On foot. <laughs> Because the, you know the Ubers, they, they kind of take a little bit of time to get there uh, from where we were. So I ran by by foot three miles to get the modifier, and I ran all the way back. Good <laughs> on you, brother. Yeah, oh my I goodness. Do remember, I do remember that. 
remember yeah. that. Yeah, I don't think she even knew I was gone. Now, I think she knew I was downstairs. Yeah, because I think he did all that while they were getting uh, hair and makeup yeah. done. So, you probably yeah. wanted to be out of sight for the for a time being. Right. Like right. I, I could. She won't even notice yes. I'm gone. Yes, right, right, right. <laughs> so yeah, but the one thing is, I, we just talked about this in another interview. Is that on set? You know, we can't project that in front of our clients. No, for so, sure. Uh, so we were we were talking to another husband and wife team, and he was like actually the shoots kind of bring you together right <laughs> because you can't be mad like during yeah. you know in, in front of the client so it kind of brings you to it kind of forces you to come together you can't be mad at me after and ran six miles yeah, right. together you know to yeah, save the so day. it kind of it kind of <laughs> makes you it makes you make up right <laughs> well what's incredible is i i feel like you know too often I mean, I have so many takeaways that I'm, I'm going to be writing down yeah, after this yeah. uh, interview. But one of the things that uh, people think is that in relationships, there there shouldn't be conflict. And I'm talking like like romantic oh, relationships, yeah. friendships, yeah. everything. And my thought yeah. is conflict is the piece that usually yields better everything. Better. Yes. I mean, not, mm -hmm. not unhealthy conflict, but, mm -hmm, but good mm -hmm. natural conflict. Right. And looking at glory like i have the book myself and mm -hmm. so if if anyone's listening to this and wondering if they should get it go and freaking stop and yeah. jump on the website we'll link it up you need the book yeah. but i was looking through it and i was thinking of i was i was going as a married couple because i know you guys so i was like yes. as a married couple how much conflict went into creating yeah. this artwork like yeah it's incredible yeah. and what you're telling me right now this yes. you said it was an eight country trip yeah, Inter well, international not, not glory. This was before our glory, but yeah, <laughs> we're, but I'm actually glad that we did that. Um, and we were able to make those mistakes right <laughs> before because it allowed us to, it, you know, every time you learn, you know what I mean? So every time you do one thing, you learn and you take it to the next thing. And like now we now know what we need to bring to <laughs> For sure. Like, <laughs> I'm not running six miles. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> but so that was. Like the yeah. first major project like that, right? Yes, yes. Because I'm, sure. I'm, I'm thinking mm -hmm. like to put this in perspective, you know, yep. usually if you were to build an uh, engine for a car from the ground up, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. your very first time turning it on, it's kind of outside of the car right. and you just put a <laughs> tiny bit of gas in it and you just give yes. it a little turn just to see if it's the engine's going to turn over. No, you guys like built an entire rig <laughs> around this engine. It's yes. hauling 18 wheel trailers yes. behind it. It's yes. it's it's got the entire infrastructure of Tesla inside right. of it because it's so critically important. And you're like, now yes. we're gonna fire up the engine for the first time yes. and we're just gonna yes. hope it works. You describe that accurately. Oh my gosh, you describe that perfectly. And I would say when I think about it, like, you know, we often think about like how we grew up, like we didn't have the resources, you know what I mean, to just have things handed to us. So we were kind of used to the grind of okay you just make this happen right <laughs> like you just try to figure out a way to make this happen and even if you have a dime you have 20 cents you make it happen um and really that's what we've been doing all along even with um you know a lot of people see our work and they see the the costumes and the designs and they're like oh my gosh like how did you guys do this and they don't realize a lot of that stuff is piecemeal together like reg is yeah. at home depot he's you know putting rigging stuff together um you know we we um that's kind of what we're used to right so at this point you know we just continue doing it um but you know even though now we have you know obviously more resources than we had when we first started out but we still use a lot of those same same tactics and techniques it's kind of like we have our own lane so we don't really we don't really run into issues that much you know anymore mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're kind of stress-free right now <laughs> it's yeah, a good, I, it's I, in, yeah. <laughs> I feel like you develop those lanes as you go yes. and you develop mm -hmm. them from crossing over into each other's lanes, bumping yes. and then kind of steering and, and going and back out. to yes. it. Yes. But it, it, it is incredible. And that's what I love so much about your story is that mm -hmm. there, there was no perfecting of something or getting it right yeah. beforehand. There was, yeah. we're going out to do something and we're going to figure it out as we go yes. along this entire journey. Mm -hmm. uh, I think too often as as creatives, you know, that perfectionist mindset prevents people from going and doing because they, they think they have to have <laughs> everything dialed in before the yeah. fact. Mm -mm. <laughs> and mistakes, that's that's where, like you said, that's where you learn, right? Absolutely. Um, it's more about where, I would say all of our um, 
I guess, big turning points in our career happened as the result of personal shoots, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, even the whole Afro art series, that was us being tired of, um, you know, we were at first, we were kind of shooting a lot of group shoots and outdoors and other things. So we were like, let's learn some studio stuff and let's try something different. And, and how yeah. do we tell that same story in studio? And we started doing that just for us. And then all of a sudden, clients were like, hey, how can I get this for my child, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we kind of took it on the road and that's, that morphed into the Afro art series, that morphed into the glory book. Um, so, you know, that's all started with personal work. I, I, I have to think that you guys, you guys are, should be sitting very happy, very proud of the fact that I think you could make an entire life out of these portraits, if you wanted to, <laughs> out of these portraits that not only are just absolutely gorgeous to look at, but that they have power and significance to them. I don't know that a lot of people have been able to attach so much meaning to what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I always feel blessed um, that we were able to find our lane, right? Like I feel like not everyone has that opportunity to figure that out, right? <laughs> and sure. I know the gravity of us being a to being one of the ones that are able to have that, right? So I just feel like every day I'm I am thankful that we're able we're finally able to have that thing that we love to do. You know, not saying that we don't ever get tired of it or we'll never get tired at all, um, because we do. But you know, it's something that. At the end of the day, if we were not doing it for money, I would still try to find a way to do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we are we are definitely thankful that we were able to to find this lane and, and find something that we really love to do. Yeah. As, as I as I see the work, it kind of reminds me um, maybe maybe, you know, of I first I've never seen anything like it, um, but it reminds me a little bit of. Uh, Ann Gettys. Remember Ann Gettys children's yes, portraits? Yes, uh -huh. It reminds me a little bit of that, but mm -hmm. with actual cultural value and yes. importance built into it. Yes. Like I see, yes. I see strength, I see culture, I see interests, I see power built mm -hmm. into a child's photograph. So it's almost yes. like, it reminds me of like an Ann Gettys 3.0 type thing where mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. this is the highest form of what that work could be. Mm -hmm. It's really taking their story. So like now we um, one of the things that we love now is that we get a lot of parents who are just like, hey, how can I get a photo of my child like this? And so what yeah. we do is we say, you know, ask your kid if they could have the shoot of their dreams, what would that shoot be? Right. And yeah. we kind of be become these magic makers. Right. <laughs> um, yes. And try to make their dreams come too. now. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes they're like. I want to be a ballerina. Uh, I'm looking at these shoes like, like they're weddings now. Yeah, right. right. He's it, like, these kids' imaginations. Yeah, like, right. He's like, how am I going to make this happen? Like ballerina unicorn, and you know. There's one that was underwater. <laughs> yes, yes, and that was the thing. He was, she was like, I want to be underwater, and I'm like, listen, I'm not getting underwater for this. Listen. <laughs> so Red tried to figure out a way to make her underwater in that in Photoshop, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, but. Um, I forgot what I was saying. So yeah, we we now are able to um, do that, but we also try to incorporate, like you said, in, incorporate culture and incorporate, um, you know, just a bit of our of you know heritage and also just um, I guess ancest ancestral traditions as well, um, because I feel like it's a way for them for kids to kind of embrace it um, and make it cool for them, right? It does. <laughs> um, because like, you know, right now, everything is just whatever's popular on social media. Right. And they don't yeah. think about all the other things. But if you can figure out a way to make it trendy and make it cool yeah. for them, um, then they start to embrace it a little bit like, more. Like with our culture, I feel like with the social media and everything that's going on, I feel like it's kind of dying. Like it's not a part of our everyday lives. It's like, like you it just, is with yeah. other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. We just really wanted to reintroduce that into um you know, our work. And, and into the mainstream as well. Yeah. I feel like, you know, oftentimes with black culture, it's, you know, a lot of things are, you know, in the beginning, they're kind of um, taken and run with. And then it's, you know, we look back and we're like, wait a minute, you know, that started here or that started in Kenya or that started wherever. Um, and a lot of times kids don't have that connection to that. Right. And so um, yeah. it's really um, showing them and, you know, hoping that they'll be um, appreciative of, um, the culture that they have. So 
I would think they would not only become appreciative, they would become proud of it. I mean, yes, yes. to <laughs> don those outfits and to go on and, and see those images on social media, get tens of thousands of, of likes and comments mm -hmm. and support. That is so transformative compared to like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, like I, half my family is is Chinese and like mm -hmm. ver there's very little uh, most people don't go, oh, I really want to grab my traditional Chinese dresses and go like, exactly. it's like mommy makes me do that kind of stuff. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so this gives very much. And I, I would imagine there's a lot of people getting ideas from what you guys are doing because yeah. uh -huh. you walk away proud to be Chinese, yeah. proud to be black, proud yes. to be yes. of African heritage, all those things. Yes. I was going to say it's the same, right? Like, um, you know, I look at my nieces and nephews and they want you know, whatever popular brand is out there, you know, in terms of clothing or whatever, they're not looking to figure out how can they incorporate African prints or African fabrics or whatever into into their clothing. Um, yeah. But, you know, again, we're trying to figure out a way to make it trendy and make it something cool and make it something they can be proud of, um, even though that's not necessarily, um, you know, society's <laughs> standard of, of what's in uh, right now. So <laughs> it's just well, really kind of carving our own lane. You're, you're doing it. And I think that it will become society's standard for the, like mm -hmm. seeing your imagery is going to have a huge impact. There's already how many celebrities that have picked up glory and been speaking. Oh, about it? So many, Oh gosh, Taraji um, has done. Um, she did a post about it. Um, Will Smith, not the glory book, but um, you know, just, he actually made a video <laughs> about our, uh, about our work. Um, and, posted that on social media, just so many other celebrities that have uh, given our their support uh, to what we do is amazing. Yeah, well, one of the things that I was talking about with Sarah earlier today was mm -hmm. I, I am a little bit missing of the fact that it feels like there's this whole new breed of artists that is just creating mm -hmm. images that are pretty to look at, but they have no significance, no meaning, no purpose. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to an extent, like, everybody does what they want to do and, and that's fine. Right. Right. But you guys have gone to the exact opposite side where it's incredible art with incredible purpose. And that is a place where I think it, it, it's kind of the bar that every artist oh. should want to reach for. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I, you know, I honestly just see it as us leaving this legacy behind. Right. Um, and I think about legacy all the time and thinking about, you know, when we're not around, what these images uh, speak to and, and what do they show and what they show about our society uh, right now. And, you know, I really want it to be something that, you know, these kids, when they're showing their grandkids, they can be proud of. Um, and, you know, that people that were not familiar with uh, with us and what we do can look back and like, wow, you know, <laughs> what was yeah. the story behind this, right? Like, I just want that to be, um, you know, a legacy that we leave behind. Why? Well, you guys have done it and are continuing to do it. So Thank you. <laughs> is the book a best seller, seller yet? Because it I, is. I'm, we were okay. so, so surprised by that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't surprise you. me at all. <laughs> we not a publisher. Yeah, right. <laughs> what they pay. Yeah, we were books. like, listen, if we, <laughs> can just be, if we can just have enough. You know, we were not expecting it to be yeah. best pub, best sellers at all. Um, but That's yeah, incredible, just guys. Or, um you know, we're still getting messages on social media. I just got one today from a lady who says, showed a picture of her daughter um, now wanting her to wear her hair out, her curly hair out to school um, because she's been looking through the book every day. And so, you know, you just it. don't realize the impact that that has when kids are, you know, seeing that. I, I really wanted this to be, number one, a book that um, that families can can talk to through together. You know, there are so many stories in there, whether it's, you know, kids that are, you um, trying to embrace, um, you know, uh, having troubles accepting their um, their complexion or their yeah. hair or, you know, there are stories about um, domestic violence. There are stories. There are also stories, uplifting stories, a little girl who's an eight year old neuroscience expert. There's a little 10 year old wow. DJ in Ghana. Right. Like, I mean, there are just so many stories. Um, and it's like that, these kids are just around the corner, man. It's crazy. Just every like, day, every day. Kids, kind of right? <laughs> yeah. It's and so, so amazing. It, it's amazing. And, you know, for me, 
when I grew up, I didn't get to travel a lot. You know, we didn't have to, we didn't have the opportunity to travel like outside of the U S at all. Um, yeah. And so, you know, for me, I wanted this to be a book where, you know, a little kid in Brooklyn or in Oakland or wherever can look at this and they may not have the opportunity to go and visit some of these other places, but they can see what, you know, some of the kids in Ghana are doing. They can read about stories about, you know, the girl in South Africa um, and vice versa. So, you know, I just really wanted this to be a, a story, a book where, you know, families and, and can, you know, talk through it together and also where kids can see themselves represented in there some kind of way. Absolutely. I mean, it, it has become that. And I imagine there's going to be multiple volumes in this series. Hopefully Maybe so, you guys, yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. it would be silly not to. Uh, yes. But can you guys talk about maybe a little bit of the nuts and bolts now about what do those lanes look like now? So as you walk mm -hmm. into conceptualizing a shoot, down to planning it, down to the actual shoot itself, the mm -hmm. post-production, what do the nuts and bolts look like now on each of your roles? Right. So I'll tell you, I'll be, I'm being totally honest here <laughs> that our, what we do now is a bit different than I, I would say that we were, except for big shoots, um, you know, we were um, much more like, I guess, big planners <laughs> mm -hmm. for a lot of projects before. And now I think because we've kind of gotten the rhythm down so much that, you know, um, there's a bit of planning that goes into it, but a lot of it is um, more streamlined. Yeah, more streamlined. So um, I am usually the, so I have a business and a background in uh, marketing, um, graphic design, web design, that kind of stuff. And so I'm usually handling the front facing side of everything. Reg hates that stuff. Yeah. And so he's like, yeah, just leave me out of that part. So I'm usually handling that side uh, in our clients. Business? Talk to me. I'll yeah, right. that business in a Smart so man. I'm that side. Um, and Reg is kind of, I, I call him the magic maker. So he's not only handling the equipment, the lighting, um, he's also, uh, you know, I'm usually coming up with a lot of crazy ideas and Reg is figuring out a way to make that happen. <laughs> so for instance, we just it. did, a boy wanted to be um, an astronaut. Um, and so, you know, we had the idea to let's do this like um, Afrofuturism, Afrofutur Afrofuturistic type of shoot um, with an astronaut and, you know, found this cheap astronaut suit on Amazon. And I'm like, Reg, I know you can hook this up, right? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'll figure it out, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, he's also tapping into Reg. When we first met, um, Reg uh, used to draw and paint and other stuff, you know, just on the side. Yeah. And so he's bringing some of that back out now, um, which I love. <laughs> so That's he's awesome. actually painting. Uh, so he's painting on the clothing. Um, I, I bought a pair of old um, uh, like boots from uh, Poshmark, like I think. Snow yeah, boots Snow boots. Like and anywhere. he like painted on those, made them really cool. I'll share some of those pictures, but made them really cool and turned them into these like futuristic space boots, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, you know, he's usually prepping that stuff before. Um, and then on the day of the shoot, um, I, you know, I would say we kind of plan only so much. We plan in terms of, I know that, you know, I want this to be, you know, have this Afro-futuristic feel. Um, you know, we um, kind of have an idea of what we want to do, but a lot of the magic happens on set. Um, we sure. have an amazing team now here in Atlanta, um, here in makeup that, really just get us right. <laughs> she, uh, Shauna, our hairstylist is amazing. And she knows, you know, I can kind of give her like, she's like, okay, what are we going for today? And I'm like, Afro future. Like, okay, I got it. Right. <laughs> and, I, yeah, right? <laughs> and she's just like, I got it. And like, you know, I, the stuff that she comes up with, I could never even think about myself. Right. And so yeah. I don't even try, like when, I, when we first started working with her, I would give her kind of more specific guidelines, like, okay, I want it to be kind of like this, but I really felt like I was boxing her in, right? Because yeah. I let her do some things, you know, kind of on her own. And I'm like, wait a minute, like, I would have never even known how to even tell you to do that, right? And so now I just give her kind of an overall, you know, this is what we're going for and yep. let her do her thing, you know, based on the theme. And really I call it, it's kind of like a creative factory. So we're kind of passing it down the line. So I, you know, we started off and then, you know, Shauna is um, doing her thing with hair and then our makeup artist, she feeds off of whatever, you know, we, we've done um, and she kind of gets her ideas there. And I'm um, sitting there with all the yeah. stuff that I made tonight, looking at it like it's not good enough. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so, so I had on to make one. Stuff. So that's so you'll oftentimes see Reg behind the scenes, like you know, drawing and you know, <laughs> and trying to get some things together. Um, 
And We're just then, like, wait till you see it in Photoshop. Yeah, right, look. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, yes. <laughs> and um, and so, you know, we're just all, we're just bringing it all together. Um, and then I usually will have, you know, my idea is to have everything that we think we could possibly use, you know, during the shoot in terms of, um, you know, things that we might add, accessories and, you know, other things. And we just kind of freestyle it on set, to be honest. <laughs> so yeah. it's you know just okay you know once once you know she gets the hair i'm like oh my gosh okay maybe i can add this or add that um and it somehow just comes together <laughs> um i prefer it that way than to us to say all right i want exactly this look and you know yeah. i want it exactly this way you know it's kind of a let's give an overall vision but then you know let's let the magic happen on set i i think that's the luxury of experience having done this mm-hmm. now I mean, yes. when you are first doing this, I, I would imagine mm-hmm. that those early shoots, you probably went in with really yes. strong Most ideas yes. <laughs> of what yes. you want. But yes. now you've you've put together this team and everybody knows how each other works and you want to mm-hmm. give each other the freedom. And so you, the team can now work with these ideas. Yes. But it's not necessarily a place that somebody just jumping into it would begin with. Like, I, I would say that yeah. that is no. a bad <laughs> idea if you are yes. just starting yes. out. No. <laughs> yes, when we first started, we definitely, like I said, I was um, very controlling about the look that we wanted, especially because we were working, um, you know, with different stylists as well. Um, so when we mm-hmm. travel, we work with different stylists. Um, and so I was, you know, <laughs> definitely like, okay, this is what we're going for. This is kind of, you know, what we want um, until we were able to get that comfort zone, get into that comfort zone um, of us being able to just kind of piggyback off of each other's ideas. Um, but in the beginning, yeah, we were definitely much more, um, you know, controlling about the look and, you know, trying to plan before and figure out what it is we were going to do. For sure. And I, and I do think ultimately that free flowing nature probably gets you to much better overall products. It does. But at the beginning, yes. it's not an option. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. In the beginning, you definitely have to, uh, you know, kind of have and and I would say doing that in the beginning and, you know, creating those mood boards and, um, you know, having all of that, that information, it really, um, I guess makes it repetitive so that you start to learn, you know, what you like yeah. and what you don't like, what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, so I think it just translates now and into a different space. Like now I, um, I have like, uh, we have like so many shoots that are coming up that I have like this Evernote note that I have like, okay, this is the shoot, this is the concept. Um, and you know, these, these are, you know, the words from the child. And then now I'm even adding, um, just for us, I added, you know, the results of that shoot so that we can see like, okay, did we nail it or not? <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> and so, yeah, I am still doing things like that. Like I still do have some of that in me. <laughs> but it's so cool because like, um, because now that we, we're able to let everybody be uh, creatively free, yeah. we have time to think about, you know, uh, a lot more time to be better at, you know, the styling. Yeah. 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 So, it's been yeah. Cool. Well, so when I met you guys, was that 2017 or 2018? When, when was Alaska? I think it was 2018. Yeah, I think it was 2018. 2018. Mm-hmm. So had you guys already gotten your book deal at that point? Was Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, we already had the deal at that point. Yeah. Yep. It's crazy, man, because like... People don't understand. We were starting to get tired with the Afro Art Series, like yes. bored, <laughs> yes. like very bored. Yes. So we were ready. To, we were good. We were like gonna we, we actually were going to cut it off. off. Um, and what? so we had, as I had just yeah. told my stylist, I was like, we had kind of finished up the year, and I said, um, this is actually the last month that we're going to do these Afro Art photos. <laughs> <laughs> this is and before I the said, book. Yeah, this is before the book. This was so. This was like late 2017, um, and we had done okay. like a year. Of, we had been doing a year of them, and um, I traveled to different um, cities across the U.S. and we had been doing them in different places. And I was like, "Yeah, I think I'm good. Like, I'm ready to move on to something else." And so, yeah, I think that it, we, were, we had that talk on, on Thanksgiving. Yeah, and and like yeah. maybe two weeks later, the Afro Art series went viral. <laughs> wow. And um, yeah, and it, like when I say went viral, like crazy viral. Like we were on, like BBC News came out from London and interviewed us in our studio, um, CBS, CNN, like just crazy um, all over the place. And um, that, and after that is when we got our book deal. And so it was like, well, I guess we're gonna. <laughs> and we're I gonna assume the, the publisher longer, came right? to you guys then. The publisher came mm-hmm. to us. Um, and so it was a little bit of a different journey. She came to us and she said, look, I've seen your work. I've seen what you guys do. Um, 
I don't have kids right now, but I need this for my future kids and my nieces and nephews. And so we need to figure out a way to make it happen. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, yeah, it was amazing. And so she said, you know, you guys need to get an agent. Um, she was like, I will give you a few to choose from that I think are great. Um, really, we knew we had one choice because <laughs> there was one who, uh, you know, stood out from the rest. She, you know, understood our culture. She understood, um, you know, the natural hair movement. Um, she had done similar books in the past. And so, um, well, not similar to Glory, but, you know, in that that arena. And so, um, we knew that, you know, we had that connection with her and that she would, you know, kind of have our best interests in mind. And we yeah. went from there. <laughs> yeah. So that's amazing. So, yeah, it was it was crazy to think about the fact that we were yeah ready to because <laughs> yeah. it's hard that's... trying to, you know, it's really hard, you know, trying to like we are we were so used to like, OK, let's do this for like a year or however often. And then when we get tired of it, okay, now let's move on to something else creatively. Yeah. Like we want to try to figure out what's our next, next thing. Yeah, um, I think I understand like what she said in the beginning, how she was coming up with everything from the hairstyles to what yeah. she wanted to make up. The that styling. does get exhausting. Yeah. It so, gets yeah, exhausting. It, right. <laughs> just trying to figure out what we can do for the next kid was just becoming. Yeah. Yeah. Exhausting. yeah. And I think, you know, at the time we were like, man, how, how are we going to continue this? <laughs> like, yeah. it's just a lot. Um, and so um, that, that so, to yeah. me seems like the crux of it, because it feels like yeah. the level of work that you're putting into the Afro art series it was yes. probably not meeting the expectation of what needs to come out of it for it to be yes. worth the time. Is that the yes. kind of yes. gist yes. of it? Yes. Sure, for sure. <laughs> um, and it was just so much that we were putting into it. It was like, wow, you know, this is a lot. Um, and I was ready to kind of like put that into our, <laughs> like this was that year. Now let's see, yeah. let's see what, what what's next on our on our agenda, right? Um, but somehow, you know, I will say looking back now, I think, you know, and, and that was another reason why we were so bummed about um, the book not coming out in 2019. Yeah. Because yeah. Kind of we were like, okay, we have to keep this going. Like, you know, right. and so we were like, oh my gosh. But I will say that being forced to, uh, not really being forced, but kind of being forced to um, continue it has forced us to honestly get more creative, right? <laughs> because yeah. we've had to figure out a way, like, you're in studio you're technically photographing natural hair kids all the time. Like what else can you do? You know what I mean? So yeah. we're trying to, so we have to figure out through clothing, through hair, through lighting, you know, through other things, like how can we make this different, different from the others? Right. And how can we make it something that we still love? And so it's forced us in a way to get creative, um, you know, kind of being in that box for, for so long. Um, and that was in the beginning, we were worried that we wouldn't be able to do that, but I guess, you find a way, right? <laughs> and you know, being um, uh, still being like learning photographers, I just feel like that look is just going to get even even better over time. Mm -hmm, you know what I mean? mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. So we still are, you know, we're still playing with experimenting with lighting and you know other things. So yeah, but, it's. I think there's so much more. <laughs> yeah, and and sticking with it though, like like this book kind of. Yes. gave you the the like you have to stick with it at this point right, but, right. <laughs> but doing that kind of makes you evaluate the entire process because i would imagine okay. that in 2019 you probably figured mm -hmm. out if we're going to keep doing this how am i going to make this sustainable there needs to be things yes. that i do not do because yes. it's draining and exactly. who are we going to hand these things off to and so you yes. probably get it down to at, at this point i would imagine the way that you're describing it now it sounds mm -hmm. a lot more enjoyable Yes, it is. It is. And a part of it, you know, a big part of it, we were having in the beginning, we were figuring out all the themes and all the concepts. Um, mm -hmm. Now it actually helps to have the kids give some input, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Because it does, you know, give us at least a jump start, right? Like we, um, the little Absolutely. girl that's coming up this weekend, she says, I want crystal, crystal rainbow, right? So now it's like, that's a spark for us. Like, yeah. okay, what can we do that's crystal rainbow, you know? <laughs> um, and it's helping us, you know, to just, you know, at least it gives us a little assist so that we're not having to come up with everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we kind of roll with it from there. So that that's also helped a good bit. That's amazing. Okay, so yeah. I, I want to, I don't want to keep you guys, um, it's already two o'clock. Yeah, you're going. Um, <laughs> I, I do want to ask this. The book uh -huh. is released. Yes. You're now in this whirlwind of media and attention. What has mm -hmm. it been like to go, you know, to all the shows? You guys have been on like every, <laughs> I would imagine <laughs> you've either been on or will be on every major show. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, it's it's a lot. Of, this one right here I'm is like, not used to it, man. <laughs> yeah. And I, honestly, I am actually so I am so proud of Reg. No, seriously, like you just don't know. <laughs> like if I look at his journey, like he is such like, and when people see him, like his, um, I would say his social media persona. <laughs> Like if you know him like on Facebook and then off of, you know, social media are two different people because he seems like he's such an outgoing guy, you know, on social media, but he is actually so shy. And he you know, told us he, earlier he wanted to be yeah, behind right. the scenes, like camera hopping. Yes. And he was actually so shy. Right. And so, you know, I've you know, we've he's had to kind of be dragged into this whole, this yes. whole thing. Um, yeah. You and, need to change with the scenario or the scenario. Will change yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. So. Um, so, you know, a lot of times it, it, it is a lot trying to balance it because we you know, I say one of the things that we still try to do, like, you know, um, as we think, I know a lot of photographers, as you kind of think about evolving as a photographer, you know, a lot of photographers think about, okay, how do I, you know, shoot a little bit less and, you know, maybe I start to bring on workshops or other things, you know, and yeah. I feel like we are still in that, I still want to shoot as much as possible, <laughs> to Absolutely, be honest, you should. Um, because, you know, I feel like it keeps us creative and it keeps us in the grind and it keeps us going. So we are still yeah, at we, it, you know, a hundred miles per hour. Yeah, we <laughs> with, can, we yeah. We authentically love this. Yes, yes, yes. So we are still in the grind. And like so I said, if we weren't getting paid from this, we would still be doing yeah. it. You know what I mean? And so, so kind of sure. sometimes to balance balance that along with other stuff, it can be a little bit taxing. But you know, we I think we've kind of figured out a way to make it work. Like our puppy is like literally sitting under the table right yeah. now. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so, right, right. <laughs> yeah, this is so hilarious. We it out. Yeah, we figure it out as we go. <laughs> well, there is a way to blend. If you guys do want to educate, yeah. there's a way yeah. to blend both those worlds. What you know, what I I usually do is, as I'm mm -hmm. photographing my children or doing the things that I normally want mm -hmm. to do, mm -hmm. I will simply bring along a behind the scenes person that films, and that's what mm -hmm. I will use to kind of create the education. But there's also a very big kind of in person, I know it's not like COVID time mm -hmm. is going to prevent mm -hmm. a little bit of this, but out here at least there's a really big market for these styled shoots and education mm -hmm. that's built into mm -hmm. them. So like getting mm -hmm. five to 10 people to come out, walk yes. through the planning process and you could be creating right. your artwork while also right. doing those workshops. Right. I will say that I know that if we were to do it, like, I think there could be a, you know, huge market there for us to do some of that. The hesitation has always been um, that we, like, we kind of have this idea of building this empire <laughs> um, in terms of like, we've, we've kind of extended um, our photographs into uh, merchandise and uh, like yes. we started about school line. Um, and so, it you know, it may I not be like, worth your time for sure. You know, I always feel like if I did, you know, if I did put my energy into something else, you know, I would probably put it into kind of um, building that a little bit more and growing that side of the business a bit more um, so that it's something that, you know, we can, you know, kind of live off when we're not shooting. Right. <laughs> um, and I think that there's like you a guys. lot there that's untapped. Yeah. <laughs> you are coming at this from a, uh, this has to be yeah. your corporate America training in the sense of like, it is, it is, it is. <laughs> because when I think of photography too, I also always yes. equate like, you know, my time, the amount of, you know, output that I have, cause yes. you have to choose. Yes. So like, I'm always kind of throwing those things in and saying, well, if I do one thing, it takes away from something else. Right. And you just yes. laid it out perfectly. Like, yes, yes, it would pull you away from all those opportunities. Yes. Right. I right, love right. your guys' business minds. <laughs> I said we're actually talking to uh, talking to a, a company tomorrow, and that's one of the things that we're talking about is uh, you know getting uh, from corporate America to this side. <laughs> yes, and that transit, that whole transition, right? Um, it's been uh, it's been a journey, but I would say that I'm actually glad that I was on that path, right? Um, because For I sure. think that it's one of the things that has helped us to become successful um, and help to keep our business around for as long as it has been <laughs> um, because, you know, we've had that background. And so it, it definitely helps, uh, even though sometimes I'm like, man, I wish we, we could have found this sooner. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but yeah, I think everything was uh, was, you know, happened for a reason. So. Well, for sure. And you guys have done yeah. incredibly well. I appreciate oh. both of you guys taking the time to come on this oh, thank you. small thank little you podcast. For us. This was awesome. Yeah, this 
I said, I definitely feel like we need to to catch up with post COVID. You know? yeah, we definitely do. <laughs> hopefully, you know, <laughs> get around um, to to seeing each other again. I, I can't wait for that. And in the meantime, though, before we sign off, so I want to make sure that everybody knows that you guys can follow down below in the description. We'll have all the links to Redis and Karn's work and also to Glory. So the best way to get Glory is actually through your website, right? Yes. The creative soul dot com slash glory has all the links um and i love it because we list all of the the big retailers but if you scroll down a little bit below we list the black owned oh, bookstores awesome. and indie bookstores as well um for people who like to shop small so that's awesome yes i love it guys and we have to have you, you back in the future if you guys yes, are ever coming through time. california let's do this in person Yes, we actually oh, have to. Yeah. We actually have to visit a little bit later. We're kind of waiting to figure out, um, you know, when things slow down a bit. But we will be back there this year for sure. So we'll definitely let you know. <laughs> Let's do it. We'll we'll get lunch. We'll bring in the studio. We'll do a follow up part two episode yes. live. I want, a, I want a studio tour. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Yeah, it's not going to be nearly as impressive as anything that you have or have seen. So. <laughs> I, actually, I might need a personal workshop. I'm always looking at your um, your um, your tips from your TikTok uh, videos, and I'm like, we are so bad at iPhoneography. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And I'm like, where does he get this from? So yes, I am definitely. <laughs> Y'all need don't need to be good at iPhone photography. No, you guys have <laughs> plenty of other skills. No, seriously. So yeah, we need a workshop. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you both and everything you guys are doing is, is absolutely incredible. I'm so proud of you guys. Oh, it's you it's so wonderful much. knowing both of you and being able to call you friends. So thank, thank you guys you for so coming much. on. Thank you for having us. This was awesome. All right, guys. Enjoy we'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks, bye. guys. You too. Bye.